Okay, this is a video about baptism. That is why we baptize with water. The Luke chapter 7, verse 30, the previous verse says that the people were, they justified God when they were baptized by John. And of course, that word justified refers to the declaring God right and uh, they simply declared God right by coming out and being baptized by John. But real fascinating is Luke 7 verse 30 because it says the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected and this is that very strong word Boulain, the determinate counsel of the God and it was the determinate counsel of the God unto themselves when they were not merged you can add sub or emerged or whatever prefix you want to put here. I really don't have a problem with it. Um, when they were not submerged by him, I, I do have a lot of friends. And when you study the Bible enough, you'll find out that I guess for just sheer lack of mental stimulation, we have to think of things like immerse or submerge and you know that becomes uh, important only in the moment but <laughs> you translate that any way you want to but when they weren't baptized by John and that of course is water baptism and of course anyone who studied the first the early centuries know hundreds and thousands and who knows how many people were baptized and participate in that we know centuries ago we still have records of people being baptized. So for 2,000 years, people have been practicing this baptism, and it's been practiced by the students of Jesus who were baptized by the students of Jesus. And some people ridicule the idea that people are baptized today with the same baptism that continue to be extended, somewhat like handing off a baton. The leading brethren who perhaps out there are more popular because of their ridicule of the faith and those who want to adhere to the text and maybe these leading brethren who ridicule a Baptist calling them perhaps low information Baptist and other terms of derision which is from the Greek word category which is to accuse people none of them really uh, would want to speak of their own baptism and their own ordination and the churches from which they or from which they were sent out and if you go back and look at the historical legacy of some of the people today who no longer wish to be associated with the baptism the determinate counsel of God unto themselves and want to diminish it it's probably because this being this and this is very attractive today I mean, if you can be part of the people that determine what's trending now and if you can always be there when the pendulum swings and be the one that is always on the right side when it arrives or the one who's moving it back and forth, then you might appreciate what it would be like for the Pharisees and the lawyers at that time to not be willing to come out and declare God right. But that's what we do with our water baptism. It's really no more complicated than that. This is a tough one I would like to see people who say the determinate counsel of God is not something that people can reject or nullify, but that's exactly what they did. Not a great accomplishment, of course. The great accomplishment was that which is diminished today in verse 29. Uh, people coming out and by being baptized by John, they were declaring God right. The same as when people come out to be baptized, when the students took that over after John's baptism was completed and the students of John were turned over to Jesus and they began to follow Christ, then those students of Jesus continued the baptism and certainly uh, the same reasons declaring God right. So that's really enough said on that. That's a lot to think about. Got a few texts that we'll enjoy studying. So this is why we water baptize.